Now, if you look at this NAFLD fibrosis score, routine parameters are used like age, BMI, routine blood investigations. This score has got a good sensitivity to rule out advanced fibrosis and a good specificity to detect the presence of advanced fibrosis, which means that if you have a patient, you are suspecting advanced fibrosis. So their NFLD fibrosis score is going to play a key role. Another score is the FIP4 score. If, if the FIP4 score is more than 3.25, that warrants a liver biopsy for these patients. What is the role of MRI? Liver multi-scan is a multi-parametric MRI technique which uses an algorithm to calculate the liver inflammation and fibrosis score. Now, this is an alternative to liver biopsy. It has got high diagnostic accuracy when compared with histology in detection of inflammation and fibrosis. And the advantage of this is, this is not affected by central obesity. However, cost is an important factor. AST and ALT are usually associated with some histological parameters such as inflammation and steatosis in the liver. However, they do not correlate with the degree of fibrosis. And importantly, normal ALT and AST do not exclude the presence of NASH. So you need to prioritize the assessment of raised elevated liver enzymes in these patients. This is a broad outline on how to evaluate once the patient of fatty liver presents to you. First, you have to look at the blood Im imaging and if, if there is any eviden evidence of fatty liver on imaging. Then secondary is to rule out any excessive use of alcohol and other causes of fatty liver. After this, you have to use non-invasive risk markers, the scoring system which we have discussed and identify the patient as low risk or high risk. If the patient is a low risk candidate, then you have to manage the metabolic syndrome, weight loss, exercise, insulin con uh, resistance control. If the patient is high risk, then you have to go ahead with an MRI or a fibro scan or do a biopsy and pick up NASH. Why this algorithm is important? Why is it so important to character differentiate patients who are low risk and high risk? Because of the natural history. If you look at the natural history and consider the key question that is, how fast does NASH non-alcoholic fatty liver progress? The progression is usually double the rate is seen in NASH as compared to pure fatty liver. So identifying and treating this population of patients who have got NASH is important. What are the clinical predictors of NASH in patients with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? These include age because it signifies that the duration of the disease has been more greater the age, the greater the duration of the disease. Postmenopausal women experience accelerated disease. The prevalence and severity is more in the Asian population. Hypertension, obesity, dyslipidemia, insulin resistance, diabetes. These are all risk factors. AST, ALT ratio more than one with a low platelet count. It is suggestive of cirrhosis. Persistently elevated ALT can be associated with a greater risk of disease progression. So these are OPD basis uh, checklist, which has to be uh, thoroughly evaluated in patients who are having a fatty liver. Whom to treat? If the patient has got progressive NASH, if there is early stage NASH, and the patient has got high risk characters, uh, high risk features, or if there is active NASH with necroinflammatory activity on biopsy. So liver biopsy is the only useful modality for assessing the severity of the disease in patients with NAFLD. Whom do you subject to liver biopsy? If the age is more than 45, female gender, AST, ALT ratio is more than one, high AST, uh, platelet ratio index, this is known as APRI index, diabetes, cytokeratin 18 is a marker used for um, assessment. It is usually a research tool. So these are all the indications. If you see more or less all the patients are going to land up in this uh, category and they would ultimately require a liver biopsy, but that is not practically possible. What do you get on liver biopsy? Three important things. One is steatosis, steatosis, ballooning of the hepatocytes. And third is the presence of inflammatory cells, neutrophils in the zone three of the assignment. So these three histological parameters are important for determining the diagnosis of NASH and to assess the severity. Now, based on these three parameters, you are going to assess the follow-up of these patients, how they are responding. Is there any improvement in the scoring system? Coming to the main management of fatty liver, most important, lifestyle modification. Exercise, exercise, and exercise. 
एक्सरसाइज फॉर मिनिमम ऑफ फोर्टी फाइव मिनट फाइव डेज को भी एंड अचीव अट हार्ट रेट ऑफ सिक्सटी टू सेवेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द मैक्सिम हार्ट रेट विच इज टू ट्वेंटी माइनस योर एज एक्सरसाइज कैन इंक्लूड दिस वॉकिंग जॉगिंग और एरोबिक एक्सरसाइजेस and weight reduction 10% of the body weight to be reduced in 6 to 8 months which is practically very difficult the dietary and lifestyle modification like for weight reduction you should have a energy deficit of 500 to 700 kilo calories and the diet should include a low fat low carb preferably a mediterranean type of diet and in inclusion of coffee 2 to 3 cups and strict abstinence from alcohol why weight loss is so much important studies have shown that if you lose up to 3% of the weight then the histological parameter that is steatosis accumulation of fat is reduced by the tune of 35 to 100% up to 5% of weight loss will cause reversal of ballooning and inflammation up to 7% will cause complete resolution of nash of all the three features in up to 60% of the patients and if you lose up to 10% of your body weight that then can be a fibrosis regression and reversal of the disease so weight loss is the cornerstone and uh, liver stiffness measurement by elastography that is fibro scan is the way to routinely follow up because every time the patient cannot undergo a liver biopsy if you broadly look at the treatment uh, aspect the pharma pharma uh, pharmacological aspect the drugs which are used are usually targeting the first step that is metabolic pathway in which uh, drugs like saroglitazar and uh, uh, obetocolic acid has been uh, recently approved uh, fda approved for uh, use of use in nash the second hit is after the metabolic pathway once there is accumulation of fat in the liver the second hit would be the presence of inflammation after that which is going to progress to nash so anti inflammatory molecules and once inflammation has set in then reversal of fibrosis that is anti fibro reversal or pro avoiding progression of fibrosis so anti fibrotic molecules so these are the broad drugs which are used some of them are not fda approved some of them are approved so if you look at the metabolism drugs obetocolic acid saroglitazar liraglutide semaglutide for inflammation vitamin e which have been used since a long time for reversal of fibrosis like these are not fda approved right now but this is how the pharmacological aspect of nash is uh, used saroglitazar has been approved and it is a dual uh, ppr alpha and gamma agonist it has got three main actions one is lipid lowering action in increasing insulin sensitivity it will reduce all fibro reversal of fibrosis and nash score reduction in fasting blood glucose postprandial hba1c and lipid so diabetes insulin resistance diabetes cholesterol liver all three parameters are targeted by this drug another drug is obetocolic acid this is a pharmacoid x receptor ligand agonist it causes suppression of bile acid synthesis there is down regulation of triglyceride synthesis and increase fatty acid beta oxidation so this also improves biochemical and histological features of nash these are the list of drugs which are in the pipeline some of them have been fda approved trials are still going on some of them are not approved so there is a long list of drugs but however for all practical purposes we have only vitamin vitamin e obetocolic acid and saroglitazar so coming to the recent advances what does endoscopy have a role to play now there is a technique known as duodenal mucosal resurfacing so studies have shown that it improves nash and diabetes markers that is reduction in the hb1c level now what what usually happens is after a meal the food goes into the small intestine be release of glp1 from the mucosa of the small intestine which is going to cause release of insulin so in this procedure what we do is uh, we inject methylene blue and there will be ablation of the uh, duodenal mucosa so this promotes healthy regrowth of the lining of the duodenum within 12 weeks and this new mucosa which has developed after the period of 12 weeks that has been shown to reduce the insulin sensitivity and reduce the secretion of glp1 so this is not yet fda approved but uh, that is what can be there down the line so with this i would like to conclude my presentation and uh, thank you for your patience listening